Welcome to this video where I will be describing how to change the color of a game object using a button to a set color, to a series of random colors, to a set cycle of colors, and randomly between set colors. So let's get started. To start off, we need to create the game object um, whose color we want to change. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to go to 3D object. I'm just going to pick a cube and then we need to create a button, but that button needs to be on a canvas. So we're going to create a canvas first. I'm going to scale our uh, canvas with the screen size. And then while selecting canvas, I'm going to right click, go down to UI and select button. Now, if you haven't already, we need to create a script that's going to change the color of um, our game object. So um, you can do that by right clicking, going up to create, C sharp script. I've already created mine called change color. So I'm going to open that up. Now, depending on what method um, or what you want your button to do, whether it's changing to a random color, changing to a certain color, to a bunch of different colors, your script is going to be different. But a couple um, elements are going to remain the same. So no matter which way you want to do, whatever you want, you want to happen, you must do um, create these two. So this is a public renderer. Um, I named it cube renderer because this is going to be the renderer of the cube. And then the game object cube, that's just the one we created before. Now here, depending on if you want a series of colors, so a list, which is uh, signified by those brackets, or just one color, you only have to create um, one or the other. So one color, you can just do line 9. If you want a list of colors, then do line 10. And if you want a list of colors, make sure to also do line 11, and I'll get into that a little bit later. Now for cube renderer, um, we're essentially getting the, cube, the renderer component of the cube we created. And that's important because we're going to change the material of this cube renderer, or the color of that. Now I've created this public method. The public part's really important because you need this later. And it's called change material. And we are going to essentially tell the button to complete change material when it is clicked. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of code in here. And this is going to be for all the different ways um, or the functions of the button. So let's first go over the first one. Now this first one, we are just going to set the material, uh, the color to our new color. And I made new color up here, a serialized field, which means that we can change new color now in the inspector. So if I save our um, script, now when I go back to our button, I'm going to assign the script to the button. You can assign it really anywhere, but I'm going to do it to the button. And now, as you can see, we need to get the cube renderer. So this is, again, this part is going to be for all um, all methods. So now I'm going to get the cube. But as you can see, we have new color here. So if we select the color that we want, let's say we want this red. Oh, also, make sure that this A value is set somewhere high because this is essentially a transparency so make sure and then that becomes red so now that we assigned our new color we need to add um, the on click so when we click we want something to happen so we're going to add and as you can see we added this script to our button so when we uh, we want to find our button which is in the scene so if I select button and then function we can see our change color script and then the name of our method, which was change material. Now, if we play and we click on the button, it's going to change to that red color that we set before. Okay, next method is t for it to generate a random color. And that's just going to be including line 26. So what this does is it sets new color instead of here, where we were able to choose it in the inspector. Now, new color is going to be this random um, color. So whenever change material is, um, is called, so whenever we click the button, a new random color is going to be assigned to new color. And then we're still setting that. So make sure to also include this line. That's really important that we still have it. So save that. And then now when we press play, a different color is going to appear every single time we hit this button. 
So as you can even see over here, our new color is changing. And we can still see that in the inspector. All right, now we're going to look at if you want to, um, if you want the color of your cube, um, let's say the colors will cycle. So let's say you want it to be blue, green, red, blue, green, red. This is the way it's going to work. Now here we are uh, changing color value by one every time. And so the idea is every time change material occurs, color value increases by one. That's what the plus plus means. And then if color value is greater than two, so the reason why I'm saying two is because if we have three colors, then it'll be zero, one, and two. So if it's greater than two, we want to set it back equal to zero. And then here, we're just going to change the color to whatever um, color value is. So color colors is right now the list. And so if we have a list of three colors, we want it to be the index. So let's say the first color, the second color, uh, and the third color. Now beware, color value the first time is going to be one. So it's not going to start on the zeroth color. And uh, I'll show you that in a sec. So if we save this script, and now we can actually determine the size of our list here. So if you do want more colors, feel free to change this value. So if you want two colors, you'll have two elements. And in this case, I made it um, three. Uh, again, although this is color value is greater than two, remember it's zero, one, and two, because we're setting it back to zero. So if I set the zeroth color to uh, red, again, make sure this is up. And I set element one to blue. And then I set element two to green, let's say. And if I were to hit play, the reason why the first time I hit the button is it's going to start blue because if you look, color value is already one. So just beware of that. And so when I continue hitting button, it's going to cycle through that blue green, red, blue, green, red, and it's going to be constant like that. Now, if you still want it to have those three colors, but you don't want it to be in a specific order, you can do the following. So I'm just going to comment this out first because we don't want this to happen. And we don't want this to happen either. So we can choose a random index. And so random range, and if you look here, so it's zero, and then the max isn't included, and that's why it's three. So it's going to choose either zero, one, two. And then if we save this, and as you can see, we do have that zero, one, two as well. So we hit the play button, and then our button, it's going to cycle randomly through these three colors. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this has helped you change the color of your game object.